welcome everyone to section number eight. This is triple integrals, but now in cylindrical coordinates, right? And in this video, right, I say polar plus triple integrals equals cylindrical, and that's pretty much true. So we're gonna go ahead and define cylindric var <laughs> cylindrical variables. We're gonna learn how to transform these things from Cartesian to cylindrical coordinates, and then we're gonna start solving some triple integrals, right, which is really what we want to get to. Okay, so polar coordinates, right? We did this in two dimensional space, and I would like to be able to expand this to a third dimension. And so there's actually a couple ways to do this. And so the first one that we're gonna be dealing with in this course is gonna be cylindrical. And there is another one, it's called spherical, and that's gonna be section number nine. So we will get to that here next time. Okay, so cylindrical. Well, let me go ahead and define this for you a little bit, right? Cylindrical coordinates represent a point in space by an ordered triple, and the typical order is we do r theta z, r theta z, in which r and theta are polar coordinates, for the vertical projection, of a point P onto the X, Y plane. Okay, I'll show you that here in just a second. We have a nice diagram. And Z is the rectangular vertical coordinate. So it stays the same. Coordinate with an A and everything. There we go. Okay, so yes, this is the same Z from Cartesian coordinates here. So, okay, here is the picture that we need to look at. So we have this point P, it's in space now, right? And if you go ahead and you do this vertical projection into the XY plane, right? So that's the confusing statement here. Vertical projection of P into the XY plane. Well, then you can figure out the correct R and the correct theta, right? Uh, that it is in the XY plane. Again, this is kind of like polar at that point, if it's in the XY plane. And so the claim is for cylindrical, we have a lot of the same equations that we do uh, for polar. For instance, x is still r cosine theta, y is still r sine theta, z, well, z is just z, right, from the good old Cartesian coordinates. So here's the Cartesian cylindrical, it's still just z. x squared plus y squared is indeed equal to r squared. And every once in a while it does come up, it's very useful, uh, right? If you take y and you divide it by x, well, that's just r sine theta divided by r cosine theta. Those r's nicely cancel out, and you're left with just tangent of theta. So we'll see, that actually does come in useful here and there. So let's get a little bit of practice. I would like to change x, y, z uh, equals negative one, one, one into cylindrical coordinates, right? So I need to calculate out what is my r and what is my theta. Okay, so maybe I could first note, right, that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? And so we would have one plus one, that's two, is equal to r squared. So therefore r, right, typically we like r's to be positive, right? They're a positive, they're a radius. Right, so I'm gonna say r is equal to root two. Okay, so if r is equal to root two, well, can we figure out what our theta value is gonna be? So we have a couple different options when we actually go to solve this. Um, probably my favorite is actually gonna be this new one right here, right? So if you take the y and you divide it by the x, so in this case, our y is one, our x is negative one, that that is equal to tangent of theta. So in this case, negative one is equal to tangent of theta. And this one's nice because it's the one that only has thetas in it, right? Otherwise you definitely need the r's, but you could actually use the x's and the y's equation as well. So tangent of theta should be equal to negative one. So where is tangent of theta equal to negative one? Well, the most natural one that comes to mind is at theta equals, remember at pi over four, it'd be equal to positive one. So this is actually three pi over four. Again, we've got to be good friends with our unit circles here, but yes. Theta equals pi, uh, sorry, three pi over four, the tangent of that will be equal to negative one. And now if you want to, right, you can check, you can verify if you were to plug in this specific R value and this for cosine, right, you should get back X, right, negative one. And likewise, if you plug in R and theta into our Y system, right, you should get out one. And you can verify that this is indeed true. 
So our polar, sorry, cylindrical coordinates, upgraded, right, is r, theta, and z. The z stays the same, so that's just 1 in this case. So that's how we can transform from uh, Cartesian into cylindrical coordinates. Now, how about the other way? You can see that actually I chose these numbers. They're very, very similar to what we have up here, but I just want to get us used to going the other way. So, right, so I have the r value, I have the theta value, I have the z value. So let's go ahead and calculate out x. Right, so x is going to be r cosine of theta, which is 3 pi over 4. Okay, let's go ahead and draw maybe a mini unit circle over here. This might be useful. So again, 3 pi over 4, here's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is over here. So at 3 pi over 4, our cosine value, well, it's negative, right? So it's negative, and it's going to be negative root 2 over 2. And so we have root 2 times root 2, so that's going to be just 2. And of course, that negative sign is still there, so we have negative 2 over 2, so that's going to be negative 1. So our x value in this case is negative 1, which is kind of, right, this is almost the double checking of this up here, right? Uh, because we had the same r and the same theta value. How about for y? So that's going to be r sine theta, 3 pi over 4. And okay, so we're going to have root 2, and let's see, sine of 3 pi over 4. So again, I'm looking at this point right here. Now sine is the height of this point. So that's going to be root 2 over 2, right? It's positive in this case. So, okay, well, root 2 times root 2 is 2. 2 over 2, well, that's going to be equal to 1, right? So we have the x value negative 1. We have the y value 1. And in this case, our z value, well, remember, these are the same between cylindrical and Cartesian. So z is just equal to 2. So in this case, if I wanted to transform back into Cartesian, well, it's going to be negative 1, comma, 1, comma, 2. All right, and there is our final answer. All right, so lastly, in order to integrate these things, right, we need to be able to switch, right, from maybe Cartesian, right, this uh, dx, dy, dz, when our triple integrals in Cartesian into cylindrical. Well, similar to polar coordinates, right, uh, we're, we're going to need to have an integration factor. So if I do f of r theta z, we would probably guess that it's the same integration factor as for polar. So it is indeed going to be r dz dr d theta, right? So there's this extra r that you need to consider when you're integrating in cylindrical. And so the last thing I want to do in this video is get a little bit of practice. I'm bringing us back to an example that we already solved uh, example 7.3, so there in section number 7, uh, we want to find the volume of the wedge cut from the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals 1 by the planes uh, z equals negative y and z equals 0. And in this case, it's specifying for us that we should use cylindrical coordinates, right? I want to do this with cylindrical coordinates uh, to really get some practice here. So again, let's go ahead and sketch this thing, right? Actually, in example 7.3, right, we had uh, at least a piece of the picture. Let's go ahead and sketch this again. So something like this. Here's our x's. Here's our y's. Here's our z's. We have the cylinder, right? x squared plus y squared equals 1. So this is a nice circle in the xy plane. And then this doesn't depend on z, right? So it can kind of move in the... Uh, free in the z direction, both up and down. But uh, notice, kind of, it's bounded on the bottom here by z equals zero. So, oops, I thought that was the highlighter here. So z equals zero. That's going to be one of the planes. And the other plane is uh, z equals negative y. So, for instance, here, uh, if you were down here where y is equal to negative one, then z would have to be at height one. Right, something like this. Uh, and likewise, if maybe y was equal to negative one half, z would be equal to positive one half, right? And so you get kind of this nice straight line, and the picture it looks something like this, right? So here is the other plane here. This is z equals negative y, looks something like this above this region. Okay, so there is our sketch again. 
and you can see really we don't use like uh, a part of this like uh, this cylinder x squared plus y squared equals one right so some of this is a little bit unused but that's fine so again if i'm interested in finding the volume remember that this is the triple integral over a region of one dv right or originally we probably wrote this with the dz dy dx sort of deal but this is the same thing as dv right so if you'd like to right we can now switch this into our cylindrical right so let's switch well one is a very boring function right there's really not a lot to do as far as the function switching it into r's and thetas and z's so when i switch one well they're everywhere you see an x everywhere you see a y everywhere you see a z right you'd have to switch these things but there are no x's y's or z's so it's just going to be one times r dz dr d theta and what it really comes down to is what are these bounds here right what are the bounds of integration for this well, the z's kind of, let me go ahead and maybe rewrite this, uh, really split these up, giving myself enough room here. So if I'm integrating with respect to z first, remember kind of I'm moving in the z direction, the first plane that I hit is the plane z equals zero. And then in my region, I exit out of the plane z equals negative y. But now in this case, right, when I have cylindrical, there is no such thing as y, right? y is really r sine of theta. So instead of y, I'm going to put r sine of theta. Okay, now let me go ahead and smash this down into the x, y plane, right? So here's x's, here's y's. And if I was to take this region and I was to smash it down, notice it's part of the circle, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So it's part of this circle here, but it's only the part where we have negative y's, right? So here are the positive y's. It's only on the negative uh, y half. So it's this piece right here that we get smashed down into. So this piece right here, that's our region now. So if I'm integrating with respect to r, right, and I'm looking at this picture right here, well, notice no matter what your theta value is, you start at r equals 0, and you exit out of the circle at r equals 1. Another way you can see this is, right, if I go up here, we can solve this. r squared is equal to 1. Take the square root, and assuming you like nice positive radiuses, you would say r equals 1. Okay, so there's our bounds for r. And then for theta, well, for theta, right, it kind of starts over here maybe at pi, and it kind of goes around until we get to 2 pi, right? So I would say my bounds here would be going to be from pi to 2 pi. All right, and that's the hard thing is really setting up this integral. Uh, as you saw, even for really any of these triple integrals, it's hard to set them up in general. Now we get to the part where we just evaluate. So I would recommend pausing the video, getting as far as you can, and then I'll spoil the surprise for you. So again, pause the video, try this one out. All right, so here is my final result. I got two thirds. If you got that, then you're along the right track. Let's kind of explain it really quick, and that'll be the end of the video. So again, I'm first integrating with respect to z. Well, notice there are no z's here. So this is just constant with respect to z, so I'm going to get rz, and I need to evaluate that from 0 to negative r sine theta. So I go ahead and I plug in negative r sine theta everywhere I see a z, and then I plug in 0. Right? So that's going to give me negative r squared, right? because we have an extra r here. OK, so now I integrate with respect to r. But actually, before I get that, I notice that we have a function with respect to theta times a function with respect to r, and then these are all constants. So I'm going to go ahead and split this up now. Right? I couldn't do it before because we had uh, one of our limits of integration. Right, We had an r and a theta in there, so we couldn't do it quite yet, but now we can. So I'm going to go ahead and split these up and then multiply them together. So when I integrate sine, I get negative cosine. Evaluate that from pi to 2 pi. And when I integrate negative r squared, I'm going to get negative r cubed over 3, and I'm evaluating that from 0 to 1. Plus, plug these things in carefully. Right, When you plug in 2 pi into cosine, you get 1. So with that minus sign, you get negative 1. And when you plug in pi, you get negative 1. But here's a minus. right? So that's going to be positive 1. And remember, you're subtracting that away. So you're subtracting away positive 1. And when you plug in 1 and 0 here, hopefully we get negative 1 third. So we get negative 2 times negative 1 third, and that gives us a positive 2 thirds. And that's a good sign, right? Because again, we have to remember we're calculating out volume here, 
right? Uh, if you were calculating out volume and you got a negative number, that would be quite concerning. So again, the positive number is a nice, good feeling, and, and this is the same answer, right, that we got before. So this is even a better way to check because we've done this exact problem before, but now we can do it in cylindrical coordinates. All right, that's all there is to it. I'll see you guys later.